Hey, Chris West again. This is my eighth video in my Why I'm Mormon series. It's been many months too long since I had my last video. Apologize for that, but hopefully getting back in the swing of things. This one being about the first principles and ordinances of the gospel of Jesus Christ and why uh, me being Mormon accept them to be true. So, going to go through these things uh, um, just step by step. Uh, covers four things uh, that Joseph Smith outlined in our Articles of Faith as he kind of explained to people what we believe in. So, um, in going at this, uh, just to get prepared for the first one, looking at it as uh, we are all unclean. We all make mistakes. We all uh, do sin. And we all fall short of where we should be. Um, and we know that. That's why uh, Heavenly Father sent Jesus Christ to perform the atonement on our behalf which means that uh, in the end, when we are judged, uh, Christ's atonement steps in and helps us uh, fill in the gaps of where we fell short. Um, however, um, that does not eliminate our personal responsibility. Uh, we not only need to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, but faith leads to action. And uh, that's kind of what I'll get in here next. Uh, this, so the first principle is faith. Uh, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. That, so I look at it as faith as two things. Faith that we believe that he is Jesus Christ and he is the Son of God, believing that that is true. And uh, second thing, part of faith, believing that what Jesus Christ says is actually true. So I think you can believe that he's the Son of God, but not necessarily believe that he can actually save you. Um, so it kind of covers two things, I think. And uh, that's, I think, the first part. Um, so uh, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we obviously want to become like him. When we know that uh, he is uh, our our Savior and that He did those things uh, in His atonement and that He has His church here today, we want to try, try to be like Christ. We want to try to um, be as Him. So it, faith only leads to action. Um, it helps us uh, then decide, okay, I, want to, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior and now I'm going to do the best to become like Him. And here's where uh, it, it, um, it, Christ's atonement does not eliminate our personal responsibility. For me, well, I think many other people as, as Mormon... Um, we, we can't just say, oh, I accept Jesus Christ, and then not live by him. I think that's a slap to the atonement, and that's a, how could you really believe it if you don't live it? And I hope that me, in my example, in my life, I can show that me, I am Mormon, um, or a Latter-day Saint, because I choose to follow Jesus Christ, and my, hopefully my life is an example of these things. That leads to step number two, or the second principle of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's repentance. Uh, repentance is choosing to overcome the things which we've done wrong and become better. So accepting Jesus Christ as my Savior, now choosing to become like Him. And, uh, and I kind of put this as kind of a five-step thing. Uh, first thing, you're recognizing that what you're doing is wrong. Um, and then part two, you have a desire to change, a desire to actually correct it. And then part three is confessing, uh, confessing to God that what you've done is wrong and you know, make, saying that you want to fix this. And in our church, we believe that if things are, are bad enough, you need to talk to a leader in the church, such as a bishop, who can help you um, repent and uh, will help you uh, get back on the right track. So after you confess that, you forgive anybody that might be um, involved or forgiving yourself. And then afterwards, after you um, ask for forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, um, you need to kind of forget everything that's happened and move on with your life. If you've received forgiveness, there's no need to gloat in it, no need to worry about anything, time to move on. And uh, so by doing so, you just repent and you become more like God and you strive to be like Christ and you want to be like Him every single day. And that means you got to repent often. We're going to make mistakes daily. And so we need to overcome those mistakes and we need to uh, be like Him. So every day you need to uh, ask for forgiveness because we're imperfect. Um, that's going to happen. But hopefully as we come along, as we make mistakes, we won't make the same mistakes twice. Or if we do, we won't do it a third time or a fourth time or a fifth time. Uh, we kind of uh, essentially start to become more like Christ through eternity and we can become more like Him um, and eventually become perfect, not in this life, but after this life. So that leads to the next uh, part. Uh, we cover the first two principles of the gospel. Now, um, the next part is the first ordinance of the gospel. The first ordinance is uh, baptism. Uh, Christ uh, has a great example of this as He was baptized by immersion by John the Baptist. And uh, we believe that you need to be baptized by immersion in order to, uh, and by the correct authority, uh, in order to enter in the kingdom of God. That needs to happen. You have to be baptized in order to get the kingdom of God by the correct authority. 
Um, and so that kind of opens up the door to many other questions you might have, and we can go into that as necessary. Um, but it is necessary to be baptized, and it needs to be done um, as Christ did, had an example to that. He did not need to be baptized because he was perfect, and, but he led by example for us to be baptized. So uh, that is the thing that we need to do. Um, a quick note here, um, we believe as Mormons that you will not be baptized till you're age 8. Um, at age 8, you've reached age of accountability where you recognize right from wrong and you can choose those things. And uh, uh, it's been revealed that those after those age, uh, or those younger than 8 are not tempted of the devil to do things wrong. So why should they be baptized? Um, they are saved if they die before that. They are saved in Christ and not have to worry about anything after that. But after 8, that's when they are baptized and uh, can then uh, choose to follow Christ in his life. Um, uh, taking the sacrament at, in our church, we take it weekly. It's a remembrance of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and his atonement, and a remembrance of the um, covenants that we made with him for our baptism. Afterwards, um, that, that's part one um, in being washing away your sins, but there's a two-step process, and that's being spiritually reborn as well. Um, and that... Uh, we are able to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which will uh, then cause our spirit to be baptized by fire, so to say. And so um, the Holy Ghost testifies of things. It helps us. It warns us of things. It comforts us things. It teaches us things. It helps us learn all many things. Uh, it has been called the most precious gift uh, that we can receive from God is this gift of the Holy Ghost. So a difference between just the Holy Ghost and the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will testify, help you understand truths. And then it will, um, but it might depart. It won't stay with you. But as you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you will then be able to have that with you off always, as long as you are worthy of it. And um, those things will help you be able to learn through life and progress through life as you go back to re repenting and uh, believing in new things. Uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost will testify and help you know that those things are true. So those are the first principles and ordinances of the gospel. So faith in Jesus Christ, that he is who he says he is, and he can do what he says he can do. And that if you believe that, you need to follow him. You need to strive to do what you can daily and repent. And uh, fix your mistakes, strive to be more like him, accept what he says to be true, and act like that. Uh, and then going in to be baptized. Now you need to be baptized as Christ was and uh, follow his example. Uh, so that you can, as you go down in the water, you are, it's symbolism as Christ died and then rose again. So you are uh, putting away the old life and coming again with the new life. And then as you do so, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost to um, help you overcome any trials and help you become more like Christ as you kind of start the process over again. As you, Because we are men and we will have mistakes and we will have to uh, do things all over again. So those are the first principles and words of the gospel that have been revealed to us in this day. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to go over these more things and uh, I'll get making other videos and we'll get that done uh, quickly. We can have new things to talk about.